All right, guys, so as promised, I told you guys I was gonna rewire this entire trailer. Now, I had a, uh, I had it as a request that I show how I do like everything, the whole process, you know, all the nine yards. Um, this process is probably not necessary. Honestly, a lot of people have told me that, which I do agree with. It's probably not necessary, but I want something that is gonna be 100% serviceable. If I have issues while I'm out working, I would like to be able to diagnose stuff super easy. We're having issues, I'm gonna zoom back here on these lights. So I'm gonna go over all the parts that I ordered. We're gonna get the tailgate down, go over all of that. Uh, at some point, I wanna redo the, not this side, the other side. I wanna do the wiring that's in here on the other side so I can, I can put my back window down, put it back up. So let's get this, let's get this guy down, grab our big Amazon box. And I want to make some clarifications on this because I did get a couple of comments on, uh, this may not be the best. Let's get these things over here real quick. So you guys can see. So I said I ordered, you know, 14 gauge and, and um, two junction boxes. Pins. We've got two junction boxes here, one for the seven way, one for, and this is a, uh, I guess this is a weather resistant one, which is what we wanted. Uh, it is 10, looks like 10 American wire gauge and plus 12 American wire gauge. So junction boxes, these are gonna be great to have. Uh, we have wiring for the brake. Oh, this is for the, this is heat shrink, which I may have gotten a little bit too small, but it seems like it'll work. I got, doubled up wire for the brakes i got a 50 foot spool of seven way wire and they're all 14 gauge which i was told may be too small um that's what the factory is using so i'm going to go with it if i ever have problems with this system this is why i'm doing junction boxes so that way everything is serviceable i can replace things in sections the wiring that we are going to keep are the wires for the side marker lights and these, this one here on both sides is eventually gonna get cut off. You can see somebody put a wire nut on here. Um, I have no idea why that was done, but basically I never did any of this wiring on this, uh, on this at all. So you can see there's two wires that come in and then there's for some reason a ground, which I um, have no idea why it was done that way. So there's definitely an issue somewhere. So anything that is, run alongside in here for these specifically i am going to keep but i'm going to run to a junction box so like i said the the um marker lights they'll be wired separate you have the lights in the back that will be wired separate and super serviceable system that is the ultimate goal here um we also went and got you guys can see i got these for the frame so that we can screw them into the frame so that it's nice and neat little bit of uh, what do you call these? These uh, cushion pipe clamps. So got those, should be super nice. And then we'll run this down the frame. Depending on how long this cable is, uh, we'll determine, I'm probably gonna put the box somewhere up in here. So we'll see how that goes. So we got our, for anybody asking, so this is the breakaway box. This actually has a battery in it because I did get the question before, how does the breakaway system work without a battery? You guys can see. The battery there's no battery here um how that works is that's the little battery for it so and i've also got just going over some things that people have asked uh every time that i park the trailer i always pull this out so that i can wrap this through the frame okay you know right here so you can wrap it through there and back through itself always before you park it make sure you plug it back in because this will drain a battery overnight a lot of people don't understand that um, when you pull this out this automatically starts pulling current from that battery and it is not a good anti-theft device because all that's going to happen is you're going to drain your battery and then you have no brakes i actually did that one night uh, a long time ago before i understood how any of that stuff worked uh, i was parked in a parking spot one night and i pulled that out and stayed there at the truck stop went to start my truck in the morning and the truck was dead so it not only drained the trailer that was on the battery the breakaway battery it also drained both of my batteries in the truck so that was a thing so yeah we'll get we'll get to this wiring over here so we can put that window down 
but yeah so that's that's the case in point so all my parts and everything like i said i'm gonna try to document this entire process i have rewired trailers before i like i love wiring things it's just when it's warm outside and i have all the tools i need to do it i'm using solder i have a, a baggie here from Home depot as well i will go over what i got because there was a couple of things that i forgot to order so they get zip ties i those i always recommend keeping got a new pair of gloves and i got a bunch of these which i hope are the right size and I also got self tappers, which the reason I got self tappers is only for the ones that are gonna get mounted on the inside of the frame, because obviously you can't get a nut on the inside. So that's what we got for those. Now, you can see that I ran this along the inside of the frame at one point. Um, this was just going to be a temporary, I'm gonna pull this whole thing out. I am going to keep this wiring for the brakes, the factory wiring, because it's actually in really good shape and it has served me no reason for failure but any of the wires that go from each side of the brakes all that's going to get replaced and i'm going to end up running that on the top of the frame as opposed to along the axle that way if i ever need to replace axles i don't need to drill into any of them and it should all work out pretty well so getting there slow slowly um i have a ton of ideas for this trailer because you guys have been sending them to me it's been awesome like i saw one guy has their winch like mounted down here with like supports and whatnot and then it comes up here with a uh with a um snatch block which is pretty cool unfortunately since this system's already done i'm not going to mess with it like this i do feel like this is going to be permanent i just need to find a you know a hook to put down here so that that way it you know it can wrap itself around the whole way so so there's that all right so first thing i haven't really filmed it uh, i do see the big difference between this wire and this wire so Maybe at some point, if this does cause an issue, we will absolutely upgrade this from 14 to whatever, uh, 12 or 10 or whatever it is. But I got everything hardwired over. Um, the reason I like these so much is because like I can come in from this angle, this angle over here. So this is all just one way. So now what I'll end up doing is the brake wire that is hanging down there, I will have that also come in separately from up here and we will also have the junction box for this guy up here which i will end up cutting and splicing all of this out and bringing it into our new junction box which means if i don't get this done today uh that we will sit tomorrow and finish it so hopefully i'm hoping to get everything done today but all i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go mount this i'm gonna start with self tappers i do have nuts and bolts i'm gonna get it like hard mounted um and then we'll go from there and obviously slowly work our way up to like something like this. I will absolutely use nuts and bolts. Uh, as you can see, our, you can see there's a nut and a bolt. Same with this side here. This is in here, nuts and bolts. This actually has grommet on it. So we're gonna redo all these grommets and everything. So we'll uh, start pulling this out. And uh, yeah, at some point we will, once we're done, we're gonna, pretty much have to cut all of this seven way wiring like yeah we'll, there is some corrosion in there you can see like the bottom here is broken i didn't even notice that until now yeah that's that's broken so that's not good glad that i'm replacing everything and it seems like i don't know Here's what the wiring looks like in the back of it. So this isn't even like the best thing ever either. You can see like there's three separate strains of wires in there. So I'm assuming, you know, brakes, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's only, that would only be five wires. So it doesn't make sense to me, whatever. Good, so we'll do it this way and uh, get it all hard mounted up. We're gonna be using, what is this? These waterproof dielectric grease. We will absolutely be using this. And I would also like to take RTV and like push it inside of here. So that way when we put this down on here, it is a better seal than just what we have going on here. So hopefully this is as waterproof as possible. We'll fill this up with dielectric grease and go from there. All right, so here's where I, what you guys missed. Obviously I'm not gonna like make a big deal about, you know, the whole, 
wiring this whole thing. All I'm doing right now is the battery box. We have everything in here. I have it mounted here um, a little bit offset to the right just because of the room up here. Use my half inch clamp. This thing, I uh, should have got three quarter. I did not realize what uh, this was when I was ordering it. So you guys can see like the difference in the line. So we'll we'll redo that someday if, if needed. Um, I have everything loose right now because we're obviously wiring everything in. So I redid all of the connections on any of these i just need to get a torch to uh you know clean them up because like the things that i'm finding on this trailer that i didn't even do like i've never used i don't use these connectors uh they're very good connectors but i've never used them uh i got a bunch of stuff thrown away in here just it seems like a lot of stuff like the way that i don't like it um i'd rather everything you know come together nicely i'll throw some loom over this and then we'll have our clamp hold downs for this as well. Uh, this is the only one we need for this guy here, but I will get it all nice. So I need to find more wire to throw in here. But for now, um, you guys can see, this is the only wire we have left. This should be the running lights wire, the one that I'm pulling out right now. That should be for all the running lights. So what I wanna do right now is I've already verified uh, white is ground, black is positive and then blue is break. So then the other ones we'll have to mess with are all of these, which will be fine. We'll get them in. So we'll get this wire taken off, um, figure out which is which, and then everything is just gonna run through this. I was gonna do the break wire separate, but then I realized I could just run it in here. And if we ever have a problem, it's easy to diagnose because I can just go from this junction box up here. Okay, do we have power here? And then we go to the junction box we're gonna put back here and do the same thing and if we don't have power then we know that we have an issue with this wire here we'll go ahead and order you know um, obviously replacements and whatnot but we're going to make it super simple because it's going to run down the frame all the way on the inside and we'll see where it stops i don't know if i showed you in the last video i'm thinking um i don't know if i want to run it down on this set down here or up here because then the problem is we have to run into this guy here um, you can see so it wouldn't make it easier we'd probably just end up running it down there so slow and steady we're getting the hang of it just gonna take me a little while i'm glad that i started today because i was gonna wait to do it till tomorrow monday but i realized all my stuff came in around like one so i'm able to at least start tearing into it so but it looks like everything here should be buttoned up and good minus actually no you know what yeah everything here should be buttoned up and good everything's got two wires this one's got three this one's got three and this one's got three unfortunately this wire this came with a purple so we're just gonna have to remember when we get to the back that power is purple instead of black it's kind of weird but yeah i'll get all these tightened up we'll get the lid back on this throw our dielectric grease in throw our mounts get our loom and go from there i have a shitload of loom here that was for this guy here so but it's all plugged in it should all in theory work i'm gonna grab let me see here yep you can see this says it's charging we test we're in the green cool so now what we need to do is come in here verify that we have brakes to that no night oh wait yep okay cool so we do have No, we do not okay cool so we do need to wire the brakes in which it will it'll figure that out as we go to it and slow and steady obviously this may not be everybody's preference on how they're going to do it but this is how i'm doing it so there's a million different ways to skin a cat this is just my way of doing it so junction box number one junction box number two and we'll get it all you know all figured out all right so we got everything done up here so junction box is in we have our dielectric grease coming out of it we got our two mounts here and everything good here i put a nut you can see i went to screw in uh this bolt and it actually snapped which is kind of nice because now we just have a stud on the inside that we could just put a nut on so that all looks really nice obviously i'm gonna have to do something with the seven-way wiring here which i'll start getting pulled out slowly um i might i think i was telling you guys earlier i might pull this back out and install this wiring here into this junction box as an insert as well just for the side lights i gotta figure out what is going on with any of the lights back here for like the turn signals and the brakes and whatnot so i'm figuring it out slowly um it's probably not going to be done today like i was saying but i'm gonna 
start routing that wiring, you guys can pretty much see how I got it done. Um, it really looks nice and a lot cleaner than what it was. So at some point, yeah, we'll throw some loom over it. Right now I don't have any on me, so I'm not super, super worried about it. So we're gonna pull down and All right, next step, I had Liam help me. We put it up in through each one of these individually. I had him pull one way. You can see we got it in the hole and then someone put this aftermarket hole here. No idea. Looks like it was done with a plasma cutter. So I will get a grommet for that so we don't ruin this wiring. But you guys can see this is 50 feet of wiring and it goes, which this is fine. I'm not super worried about it going all the way. But you can see just how far it goes. It goes like right, right about to this back ramp here. So. That's fine. We'll see what we need to do and add extra. Worst case scenario, tell me if you guys think it might be overkill to add a third junction box. Let me know. I, I, I'll think about it, but if I can add a junction box somewhere in this area before the brakes and then add a junction box back here somewhere specifically for these lights here, let me know if you think that'll be overkill, um, if it'll make it a little bit more complicated. I think obviously junction boxes are great because they allow you certain points along the trailer uh, as a diagnostic, okay? So it works to this junction box, great. Move to the next junction box, check your connectors. Okay, it doesn't work there. Cool, so we know that there's an issue there or say it does work, so you go back to the next one. Oh, there's no power there. So you know that there's an issue from this junction box to this one. That's just kind of my logic for a long trailer. I don't know what a third junction box makes sense. They're only 10 bucks. Honestly, these things, uh, I don't even know where I said it. These things are super cheap and they're not really made of much. It's like you have all your wires in here and whatnot, but they're super cheap. So I don't know what you guys think. All right, here's about where we're at. This is how I figured out I'm gonna do it. Um, in the future, we will uh, obviously, cause like, things improve things make advancements in life um obviously this isn't going to be this way forever if i keep this trailer for a long time so how i have it any pillar that has like this going across it i've run it up and over and then anything else i've just run it through and i'm running the little grommets there on each each one and then like i said once you hit one of these it goes over top of it um is it the best design in the world we'll see uh, we'll see if it becomes a problem. Uh, my logic here is that this wire is thin enough and this here provides enough support. If it becomes a problem, we'll fix it. Obviously, you know, junction box makes it a lot easier. So the wire comes all the way up. I do have quite a bit left over, obviously, because we can run back there and we're gonna redo all of the brakes. I have bought specific wire uh, for the brakes and everything. So what I'm gonna do while this it's all done, actually, I'll show you guys. Let me get out from underneath of here without falling on my ass. So you guys will see on the very first one, let me get uh, get down here. So I've run it through here, over, and I've just constantly the whole way up until the first one. So there's like one, two, I think three spots where it goes up and over like that. So right here, uh, right here, no. Not right here, right here, and right here. And then here's our junction box. So now from this junction box, we can tee in all the brakes, and then we can start pulling all of the wiring out for each light. So I think, if you guys look down here, I can't tell you, there's a ground in there. So for some reason, each one of those lights is grounded at each individual spot, which I don't know why. Like this here is obviously gonna have to get redone. So I will probably end up cutting each one of these harnesses out. I'll follow them back through and rewire them all as direct as possible and try to meet them all back at the junction box. Like I said, I'm gonna be looking for your guys' opinion on putting a third junction box back here specifically for this set of lights here. I do want your guys' opinion on that. Because if you guys say that's a good idea, I'll absolutely I'll go ahead and buy the other one. They're literally ten dollars. Um, if it's not a good idea and you think it'll overcomplicate things, then I won't do it. But as of now, 
everything is run back to everything's run back to the junction box now so this is the factory three-way wiring um this stuff actually looks pretty thin it looks like it's 14 or 16 gauge wire so i'm not going to be super concerned about the wiring that i bought yet like i said if it does cause an issue i'll replace it but so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna try to find a way to get all of this out and because what i could do like there's a bunch of different ways i can do it i can get i need to get this wire out first so the brakes are already wired in and they should be they should be to that junction box so i'll probably end up wiring the brakes first and then tomorrow we'll make our way to the back so if uh hopefully this makes it easier for you guys that don't have any detailed guides i don't know how many guides there are on wiring online um but this is how i'm doing it and it's it's super simple it does take some time you really do have to take some time into it like when i was cutting wires out and whatnot I was taking one thing at a time, like where this was at, like that was confusing because every wire was literally the same gray color. So I had to make sure each individual harness was right. I used this right here. So obviously white is ground. So I ran that to the ground where it was and then ran another ground all the way up into our junction box up here. So this is grounded through the seven way and the trailer is now grounded through this for this. It's weird that it's such a small ground though. It's like, 14 or 6 or what was it 12 gauge wiring is what's grounding this entire trailer so that's kind of a lot to think about um and then your brakes obviously this one the blue wire goes to this guy here and then it splits back and tees into the actual brake wire which then i have in here which then also has the real brake wire going all the way back to the brakes and then uh the other one was the black which black goes all the way up into here for power seems like super small for like grounds and whatnot um a ground that tiny like dinky tiny is what travels the entire length of the trailer and grounds out every one of the lights so that's kind of we'll have to add something bigger at some point but that's literally how they are from the factory it's kind of weird but you know start getting into it let's start wiring these brakes up all right so i'm gonna show you guys where i left off um i'm gonna leave you know a little bit of the mess out here because we are going to come back and tackle this sometime tomorrow so i'm gonna grab all my tools obviously anything that needs to go with me can go back in the truck here is my trash pile obviously i never saw that so that kind of this could be where some of the short is as well like i'm kind of I don't know. It's hard to say because it doesn't look like it's touching anything. So I don't know if it's actually a short or not. To recap, all the wires are run. Junction box is done. And I, I filled that thing up with some dielectric grease. Uh, this box, I just have the lid on it. And you can see, so we started tackling the wiring for the front two brakes. Ugh. I ripped off all of the wiring for the backs. I have everything you can see. This is where I was going to actually know it was that one. But um, you can see that I have it run down. It tees off into that one, comes back, or brings it over here. Then it tees into this one. Now I'm going to cut this in half and then run it to the next one. And then run to that side and then do the same thing. You know, it's basically going to come like this, like it normally does, and back to the last brake over there. So this brake works. Liam was messing with the brake controller and I heard it come on. So this one I don't know about yet. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is I may put two more here so that it has somewhere to sit because over time this could rub through, which is basically how they have them sitting like on the frame here. Like that sits like that. It's kind of weird that that's how they do it. But I might add another one in here. Let me know if you guys think that's necessary. Um, oh man, kicking all my stuff here. So... All in all, this uh, this wasn't a super hard job to like tackle. Um, I think I did pretty much the simple part first. So, like I said, this whole thing can come off. I just put it on to keep all the water out and whatnot. Get yourself some of these. I feel like these are the nice way to do it. Um, and yeah, so like I said, I am far from new with wiring. Like I actually went to school for electronics engineering 
and I used to wire in sound systems and whatnot. And even though, even though I was able to get like the wiring perfect in my opinion, I would always go back and redo it. I probably redid my sound system wiring back in my old Honda at least five to 10 times just because it's like I was super OCD and I would always think of a different way to do it and a better way to do it. That's just me. Um, I, I did the same thing with the truck. There was nothing wrong with the wiring in the truck and I still went through and redid the wiring again just because I wanted to. So super simple to do, just very, very time consuming. I am soldering everything, putting dielectric grease on everything and then heat shrinking it. So I wish I would have got a more, uh, actually not more, but I wish that I would have got a uh, bigger thing of heat shrink for some of the other sections, but for now, it'll do. So this is what we have left of the big wiring. I don't know how much I'm gonna use. I don't know how much of the factory harness I'm gonna use because I wouldn't wanna normally use the factory harness, but because it's in a junction box, I can replace sections. Um, all of this is gonna get, like I'll be able to reuse this, but I'm gonna get rid of all of the grounds and just run both wires uh, if this actually has two wires in it, I'm gonna run both of them to the junction box from each corner. So, I don't know. Like, I don't know why. This one has a wire cap on it. These are for houses. Like, this is for a house. Like, you can't, I don't, I don't know why that's on there. But, you know, whatever. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Nothing fun wiring, but if you guys want, go uh, go check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Go buy something, Coinbase code down there. Um, I do want to mention something real quick about Ukraine. Patreon, it looks like they have declined. Uh, they actually put a stop on $250,000 in donations for Ukraine. But one of the things that I have said about cryptocurrencies is that you can't stop them. It is physically impossible to make them illegal. Decentralized exchanges make it all possible. And because of that, there was over $4 million worth of Bitcoin donated to these charities that are helping out Ukraine. Um, so that's one of the things, you, you can't stop Bitcoin. And it's awesome that there has been a way, because if there's gonna be companies that are blocking help, to Ukraine for like what's going on right now. Um, nothing, and I'm not even saying this politically wise, it's, this is fucked up. So the fact that there is ways that people are able to help, um, even if you can't help, try to spread the word on it. Um, I'm gonna say something here, you know, for it. You can send your Bitcoin uh, as a donation and not actually have to worry about being denied. Um, yeah, $250,000 Patreon literally was like, no, you can't send that and it's like it's kind of screwed up i'm not gonna lie but like i said hope you guys enjoyed don't take any day you have for granted enjoy the time you got because obviously think you're you never know um life is full of uncertainties especially especially over there it's it is very unfortunate so and rant hope you guys enjoyed see you tomorrow